The temperature dropped 15 degrees in six days. An entire family died where they sat, their final meal still in their mouths. This happened 40,000 years ago, but it could happen again tomorrow. In the Ice Age, the planet operated by different rules, rules that could erase you without warning. Welcome to a world where survival was never guaranteed. The first hour, stepping onto the mammoth step hits like a physical blow. Minus 25 degrees Fahrenheit with a 30 mile per hour wind creates what meteorologists call a wind chill factor of minus 53 degrees. At this temperature, exposed skin begins freezing in under 15 minutes. Modern winter gear fails immediately. Synthetic jacket insulation compresses under wind pressure, losing 80% of its thermal efficiency. Cotton clothing, jeans, underwear, socks becomes a heat sink, wicking moisture and conducting cold directly to skin. Rubber-soled shoes turn rigid as concrete, providing zero insulation from the frozen ground. The wind is the killer here. It strips away the thin layer of warm air your body tries to maintain around itself. Ancient humans built their entire clothing systems around defeating wind. Layered fur with the hair facing different directions, wind-resistant outer shells, and sealed seams that modern outdoor gear can barely match. Within minutes, peripheral vasoconstriction begins. Blood vessels in hands and feet clamp shut, redirecting warm blood to protect vital organs. Fingers become clumsy, toes start going numb. Fine motor control the ability to grip tools, manipulate objects, or even zip up a jacket begins deteriorating rapidly. R2. Your body temperature has dropped half a degree, not yet hypothermia, but heading there fast. The body's emergency heating system kicks in, uncontrollable shivering that burns calories at three times the normal rate. Muscle contractions generate heat through friction, but at an unsustainable metabolic cost. Here's the math that kills. Shivering burns roughly 300 calories per hour. Walking in snow burns another 200. Fighting wind resistance adds 100 more. That's 600 calories hourly, when most people have maybe 1,200 calories of readily available energy in their system. The fuel runs out fast. Meanwhile, cold-induced diuresis begins. Blood pressure spikes as peripheral blood vessels constrict, forcing kidneys to dump excess fluid. Dehydration accelerates even as the body desperately needs every calorie for heat production. The physiological stress cascades through multiple systems simultaneously. Ancient Arctic peoples countered this through fat loading, deliberately gaining 15 to 20 pounds before winter. Their metabolisms had adapted over generations to efficiently burn stored fat for heat. Modern humans, adapted to consistent food availability and climate control, lack these metabolic adjustments entirely. Hour 4. The mammoth steppe stretches endlessly. No trees, no hills, no landmarks of any kind. Just waist-high grass under an overcast sky that provides no directional cues. Getting lost here isn't a possibility, it's inevitable. Hypothermia clouds judgment within hours. The brain, consuming 20% of the body's glucose, gets rationed fuel as core temperature drops. Decision-making deteriorates. Risk assessment fails. The ability to form short-term memories, crucial for retracing steps, begins breaking down. Indigenous Arctic navigators developed techniques that seem almost supernatural, reading wind patterns and grass movement, interpreting subtle color variations in snow that indicate underground features, using star positions invisible to untrained eyes. These skills required decades to master and cultural knowledge passed down through generations. Lost, disoriented, and cognitively impaired, most people would begin walking in circles within the first few hours. Energy reserves disappear through inefficient movement patterns while hypothermia makes the growing crisis seem less urgent than it actually is. Hour 6. Movement in the grass nearby. Something large, deliberate, unhurried. Ice Age predators operated under completely different rules than modern wildlife. No cars to avoid, no hunters with high-powered rifles, no reason to fear human scent. 
cave lions weighed up to 500 pounds, larger than modern lions but not quite the giants once thought, with jaws powerful enough to crush mammoth bones. They hunted cooperatively and had zero instinctive fear of humans. Scent betrays everything in this environment. Soap, deodorant, synthetic fabrics, processed food residues. These chemical signatures announce your presence from miles away. Ancient hunters masked their scent with smoke, animal fats, and plant materials, becoming essentially invisible to prey animals. Modern humans smell like aliens. Worse, hypothermia destroys the startle response and impairs reaction time. Even spotting a predator, the body lacks the coordination for effective flight or the tools for effective fight. Ancient humans carried multiple weapon systems, spears, knives, clubs, and atlatls, spear throwers, that could drive projectiles through thick hide at 40 yards. The grass rustles again, closer now. Hour eight. Glycogen stores are nearly depleted. The body begins catabolizing muscle protein for emergency fuel, a process that generates less energy while destroying the very tissues needed for heat production and movement. This metabolic shift marks the point where recovery becomes increasingly unlikely even with rescue. Finding food requires knowledge that took lifetimes to accumulate. Which plants remain edible after freezing? How to identify animal tracks in snow? Where to find cached food stores? How to process raw meat safely? Ancient peoples memorized thousands of details about seasonal food availability, preparation techniques, and preservation methods. Modern humans recognize perhaps a dozen wild edible plants, mostly summer berries. Ice Age winter survival depended on foods most people would never consider. Bone marrow, organ meats, fermented fish, cached nuts, dried insects. The caloric density and specific nutrients needed for cold weather survival simply aren't available through casual foraging. Starvation amplifies every other survival challenge. Coordination suffers further. Immune function collapses. The ability to maintain body temperature deteriorates as metabolic fuel disappears. Number 12. No wood exists on the grassland, but ancient people solved this through burning dried dung, animal fat, and bone marrow. They carried fire starting kits with multiple backup systems, flint and steel, fire plows, bow drills, and char cloth that could catch sparks in wet conditions. Fire provided more than warmth. It enabled melting snow for water, cooking food for easier digestion, signaling for help, and psychological comfort during the endless dark hours. Most critically, fire created a microenvironment where core body temperature could stabilize and recovery might begin. Modern fire starting methods fail rapidly in extreme conditions. Lighters stop working below 20 degrees, matches blow out in wind, paper and cardboard won't sustain flames when wet. Even with successful ignition, maintaining fire requires understanding airflow dynamics, fuel ratios, and heat conservation techniques that ancient peoples developed through necessity. Without fire, death accelerates through multiple pathways simultaneously. Dehydration, continued heat loss, inability to process food, and psychological breakdown from the growing certainty of doom. Hour 16. Isolation becomes a separate form of torture. Humans evolved as social creatures. Prolonged solitude triggers profound psychological stress responses that compound physical survival challenges. Ancient peoples never traveled alone in winter conditions. Group survival strategies were literally built into their social structure. Hypothermia attacks the prefrontal cortex first, the brain region responsible for complex planning, risk assessment, and emotional regulation. Paranoia develops. Decision-making becomes erratic. The ability to accurately assess danger disappears just when accurate threat assessment becomes most critical. Umbles begin manifesting. Stumbles, mumbles, fumbles, grumbles. These warning signs of severe hypothermia mark the transition from a survivable emergency to a likely fatal outcome. Ancient peoples recognized these symptoms in group members and had protocols for intervention alone confused and increasingly irrational, most people would make the fatal decision to lie down and rest. Ground contact drains remaining body heat through conduction at a rate that makes recovery impossible. Hour 20. Core temperature hits 93 degrees Fahrenheit, mild hypothermia territory where cellular processes begin struggling.
Your body has been fighting this battle for 20 hours and it's losing. Enzyme activity slows dramatically. Heart rhythm becomes irregular as the electrical conduction system struggles in the cold. Breathing becomes shallow and inefficient. Blood thickens as plasma volume decreases through cold diuresis and cellular dehydration. The heart works harder to pump increasingly viscous fluid through constricted blood vessels. Oxygen delivery to tissues deteriorates just when oxygen demand increases through metabolic stress. Paradoxical undressing often begins around this stage not because victims feel warm, but because severe hypothermia causes confusion and disorientation. People become combative and irrational, making decisions that seem logical to their impaired minds, but are actually fatal. Many hypothermia victims are found partially clothed because they removed layers during this confused final phase. Kidney function deteriorates rapidly. Toxins accumulate in the bloodstream as the body's filtration systems fail. Consciousness becomes intermittent as brain function degrades. Hour 22. The pack has been following for hours now, drawn by the scent of weakness and confusion. Ice Age wolves were larger than modern wolves, some approaching the size of small horses, and they understood human vulnerability better than humans understood wolf behavior. Wolves rarely attack healthy adult humans, but they're excellent at identifying compromised prey. Erratic movement patterns, unusual scents, and obvious distress signals mark someone as an easy target. Ancient humans understood pack dynamics and had specific protocols for wolf encounters, including group formations and noise-making techniques. Hypothermic individuals often fail to recognize predator threats entirely. Cognitive impairment prevents appropriate fear responses. Even seeing wolves nearby, the brain struggles to process the danger or coordinate defensive actions. The pack circles closer, patient, and methodical. They've done this before. Hour 24. Core temperature reaches 82 degrees Fahrenheit, severe hypothermia where cardiac arrest becomes imminent. At this stage, the heart's electrical system fails in the cold. Brain activity slows to near tingy levels. Consciousness fades in and out. At this stage, even immediate medical intervention has limited success rates. The cascade of physiological failures, kidney shutdown, liver dysfunction, cardiac instability, brain oxygen deprivation, creates multiple simultaneous life-threatening conditions. Ancient peoples who reached this stage rarely recovered even with group support, fire, and traditional warming techniques. They understood when someone had crossed the line from emergency to inevitable death and they had cultural protocols for making the final hours as comfortable as possible. Individual tolerance to cold varies significantly based on body fat, fitness level, age, and previous cold exposure. Some people might succumb faster, others might last longer, but the physiological processes remain the same and they're unforgiving. Death comes quietly. The heart simply stops beating as electrical conduction fails. Brain activity ceases within minutes as oxygen-starved neurons shut down. There's usually no struggle, no final moments of clarity, just a gradual transition from consciousness to oblivion. The wolves approach cautiously at first, then with growing confidence as they confirm what their instincts already knew. Every Ice Age human who survived to reproduce had mastered dozens of survival skills that took years to develop, fire-making in extreme conditions, navigation across featureless terrain, weather prediction, food preservation, tool manufacturing, first aid, group coordination, predator avoidance, and emergency shelter construction. They possessed physical adaptations modern humans have lost. Increased lung capacity, enlarged sinuses for warming air, more efficient fat metabolism, and possibly altered blood chemistry for cold resistance. Their childhood development occurred in cold conditions, creating physiological changes that improved survival odds. Most critically, they lived in groups with complementary skills and redundant knowledge systems. No individual knew everything but the collective knowledge base covered most survival contingencies. Group cooperation wasn't just helpful. It was absolutely essential for winter survival. Modern humans have traded these capabilities for other advantages, abstract reasoning, technological innovation, complex social organization, and accumulated cultural knowledge. These trades made sense in our current environment, 
but left us profoundly vulnerable to conditions our ancestors considered normal. Even well-prepared modern survivalists with extensive training would struggle in Ice Age conditions. The combination of extreme cold, dangerous megafauna, limited food sources, and complete isolation from support systems create survival challenges that exceed what most humans can overcome alone. Ice Age survival required not just individual capability, but generational accumulation of knowledge, cultural transmission of techniques, and social structures designed specifically for extreme environment survival. The humans who succeeded weren't just tough, they were part of survival systems that had been refined over thousands of years. Modern civilization represents a trade-off. We've gained incredible capabilities in science, technology, medicine, and social organization, but we've lost the detailed environmental knowledge and physical adaptations that kept our ancestors alive in harsh conditions. This isn't a failure. It's specialization. Ancient peoples couldn't perform brain surgery, send messages across continents instantly, or feed billions of people through agricultural technology. They couldn't do those things because all their effort went into the basic challenge of staying alive in hostile environments. But the Ice Age reminds us that our survival still depends on systems larger than ourselves, infrastructure, supply chains, social cooperation, and accumulated knowledge. When those systems fail, we're often as vulnerable as any time machine traveler dropped into the prehistoric past. 24 hours in the Ice Age. Most modern humans wouldn't make it past hour six. The few who lasted longer would face systematic breakdown, metabolic failure, cognitive impairment, predator attacks, and the gradual shutdown of biological systems not designed for extreme cold. Death would come not from a single cause, but from cascading failures across multiple body systems. But here's the paradox. Our ancestors didn't just survive in this environment. They innovated, created art, raised families, and built societies complex enough to sustain themselves for millennia. They became the foundation for everything that followed, including the civilization that makes our modern vulnerability possible. We carry their genes and their intelligence, but we've lost their hard-earned knowledge of survival in a hostile world. That trade-off gave us antibiotics, space travel, and global communication. It also left us dependent on systems that didn't exist in the Ice Age. Heated buildings, processed food, emergency services, and the accumulated infrastructure of modern life. The Ice Age teaches us that survival is never guaranteed that the margin between life and death can be measured in degrees of temperature or hours without food. Our ancestors paid for their survival with constant vigilance and skills that took lifetimes to master. Their legacy isn't just genetic, it's the proof that humans can adapt to almost anything, given enough time, knowledge, and cooperation. But that adaptation comes at a price, and it can be lost faster than it was gained. In the right circumstances, with the right preparation, modern humans might surprise themselves with what they could endure. But in the Ice Age, unprepared and alone, we'd last about as long as any other tropical animal dropped into an arctic wasteland. The cold would win. It almost always did. 